Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Boo. You heard the term happy clicker, right? I have not heard of this term happy clicker. You never heard that? No. Especially a guy who used to build PCs for people, and I assume done some troubleshooting for people. Yes. You never heard the term happy clicker. And I have a story there. So when we get done with whatever you have on deck, don't forget whatever oh, you have on deck. It's, it's I have just, not heard happy cl- happy click. Well, well I, now that you're I mean, insinuating it's a mouse thing. Well, like I a, mean, I used to do support. Like, that's when I first started doing was just tech support. Right. And we had a term for people where they were way ahead of you. When, they, when you're trying to troubleshoot something with them and you're like progressing them through some oh, steps oh yes. and they're just happy clicking around on shit that they don't have any business happy clicking on, that's right. a happy clicker. Right. Yeah. Happy clicker. Fuck you, happy clicker. Stop. It's like the people that- Just stop what you're doing. Like, uh, I, I saw it a number of times in video games, uh, particularly like uh, RPGs, it, it, uh, Ted would probably know, like playing like uh, Knights of the Old Republic- or a um, Mass Effect, it's the people that if you're watching them play through and it's like story mode based with dialogue interaction, uh, th- like the conversation wheel, there's n- nothing. Nothing's being paid attention to. They're just like, zip, and like pushing through the conversation. And yeah. you're like, what did, th- what did that person say? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I-, I had a, what would be like a friend nephew non-blood but might as well have just been a nephew and he was notorious for that like first person shooter fine uh mario all those things but his attention to detail when you needed pace Mm. or read the read the dialogue read the directions he was checked the fuck out like everything was just mosquito (laughs) <laughs> no, I was trying to be sly and tell you your light was out. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt oh. that train of thought. Dude, uh, <laughs> he anywhere but nowhere. Yeah. Like, he could not be bothered to read dialogue. And like, well, how do you know what kind of, uh, like, uh, when you're trying to do, um, like, morality choices yeah. in, in, like, dialogue? Yeah. Like, he's... He's just like he's gone like, through. Yeah. Well, well, what did it say? What did What do they want you to do? I, I don't know. know. I'll just I'll just I'll pull it, it up out. in the like the quest log. Like, f- <laughs> <laughs> like I want to know in the moment. Yeah. It, it right. would be like getting th- re- reading a choose your own adventure book, like Oregon Trail, or and just shit. like going down to the like the b- reading the bottom of the page, like go to either five or nine. Oh, okay, nine. Whatever. Like, well, what did what happened leading up to that? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. The, what I, was the choice that led you to nine? I just picked up nine. Uh, nine whatever. Uh, nine. Oh. Oh, well, that wasn't. That's the. Wait. That, we just started. <gasps> yeah, that we was. We don't have our uh, consultation cooling packs. I don't think that's going to. That's not that's, doing it. It's giving me the warm fuzzies. I haven't set those cables again just to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. Um, I have to. Talk, I'll have to contact support and talk to Rudy. The uh, yes. So I know, and my wife oftentimes hashtag I love my wife. Yeah, like, you do. Like when you're trying to. Uh, Damn it! That's gonna bug me so bad. That, that's right out of the gate. <laughs> Damn it! Keep talking. Like uh, it'll happen. Like I, I know. We, I, I want you to take a moment and let me finish this sentence before you presume what my next instruction is going to be or even that uh, I, I need to see what's going to happen from the last thing I, I asked so I need to see it play out on the screen or whatever we're doing and then I'm going to have you click like the right. uh, okay well, I needed to see what that was before I so I could tell you what happens next uh, and I, I don't well, know what that's, that's I don't know what that was. Is that's there a back to be? button? No, there's no back button. That's well, how the game's played in general. Right. So I understand like happy clicker like you know. Well, you're like <clears throat> Oh, so now I would do this. I don't want you stop. <clears throat> yeah. I what I want you to do is what I'm telling you to exact, do. Uh, please just yeah. be patient. Yeah. Uh ah. that's a frequent thing when we talk about like when I do tech support. Yeah. I go you want me to do? No. No, just did I tell you to do that? I under, Did I, the words that came out of my face say to do that? You're on the phone with me. 
<laughs> because you need my assistance. And I will walk you through this step by step. This is no bueno. It's not. Yeah, it doesn't please me. I'm, in fact, I'm an angry customer right now. Damn it, that was a mosquito. I'm an angry f- customer of donated goods. So we got, <laughs> yeah, we got great weather, an opportunity to do the videos. Yeah, because we're not in my kitchen. And the videos is, hey, yeah. man, I mean. Uh, you know, I'll email. It's not I'll so, email Rudy It's not so tomorrow. bad. Like, it's, uh, it's nice not having Max's wang stare at me. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't tell if he was flirting with me. Oh yeah. Or if that's just his posture. Oh, but yeah. either way, I was kind of intrigued, and then I was like, I think he's threatening me. He's trying to show me his. As he lays down and just chills. Right. As yeah. he just kind of like leans back, like, "Hey, <laughs> you see this? Yeah. I know you see this. You're trying to do a podcast. Do you see this? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this stick. Yeah. Look at this. Wing. How you doing? Check out my wing. Do you see me? I'm not even panting right now. Yeah. Check this out. And I'm like trying to do podcast. If we're going to all take our pants off, then <laughs> shit, here we go. I mean, the only thing he's missing is like a little t-shirt that doesn't right. cover his wang. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's it. That's what he needs. It's just yeah. a little Just like a Chippendales outfit. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like, hi, how you doing? I'm Max. Oh. Oh, that's yeah, what time it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> God damn, we're recording with the cocks out. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. so you had, yeah, we'll mm. we'll come back to tech support because this one's a good one. But go go. My wife has an interesting, um, <clears throat> interesting thing going on. So she works for. <laughs> I may get in trouble for even mentioning this, but she works for the school district here. Okay, uh, working with. Uh, she's a teacher's aide, so she works with special ed kids. Okay, and <clears throat> bless her heart, she has the the cares and the. Right? For all the stuff. Yeah, the feels. And part of the job that she has taken on is their special needs kids. So they there's kids with feeding tubes, and there's kids that poop themselves, and there's kids mm. that, you know. And so one of the things that she got when uh, when she first started taking this position was that she got extra pay because she might have to change diapers. Which okay. she does often. All right. Um, and so so she got extra pay for that. Well, the class over, I mean, she's worked there like 20 years now, but the class has kind of evolved over the years. And to the point to where this year, uh, most of the kids that are in there all have some sort of medical thing that needs to be attended or, or needs attention or mm-hmm. needs expertise in dealing with. All right. Well, these are teacher's aides that don't have any medical training whatsoever. Right. My wife is not a nurse. None of the people in that class are a nurse. The teacher's not a nurse, right? And they get two minutes of training on like a feeding tube or a, mm. whatever it is. Okay. X, Y, Z, right? But they're being told they this is what they have to do. All right. It makes my wife nervous. Uh, she has... She has mentioned numerous times she's not really comfortable with this. It's not like mm-hmm. something that she's she knows what she she's not versed right. in it, right? Right. So it makes her nervous, especially dealing with she doesn't want to make a kid miserable that's nonverbal because she's done something wrong. Right. Or something like that. So she she's really nervous or hurt them in some right fashion or right. worse, right? She is not hospitalized. Not yeah. If there if there's any other if you didn't have enough reasons to appreciate teachers and teachers' aides at this point, right, right, l- listen carefully because yeah. they're being asked to step into roles with a minimal amount of training. Yeah, and you know, it, it, she makes more than minimum wage, but not much more than minimum wage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And minimum wage has come up a lot, and her wage has stayed fairly steady. Mm-hmm. And they have situations where it's like they get, so first of all, they get extra pay for changing diapers, but no extra pay for being nursey things, right? Okay. They don't, so, the, so the feeding tube stuff? Or... They don't get any extra pay for that. Okay. Um, so when she, the last, one of the last raises she got, because usually they just get some, some like amount. Mm-hmm. And one of the last raises she got was really upsetting to me because it was like, well, you're getting a raise, but 
you have to work three extra days to get that extra money. Okay. And I'm like, that's not a raise. Right. You're saying you just have to work three more You're days. You're allowing me to work more, which makes me more pay, but that's not a raise for the same amount of work. Bingo. Okay. So that kind of stuff is happening. They have a union. It's a fairly decent sized school district. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, the union has been very lackluster. They don't take the they don't take a lot of the aides or the teachers very seriously. She's represent. She pays her dues. Like she's she mm-hmm. has this representation that just doesn't do much. Mm-hmm. And. <clears throat> Recently, because of this particular class and I think some stuff that happened uh, last year, okay, uh, it was my wife sort of like, was like, what's the deal with this? Like, we're not nurses. We don't get paid to do this, but yet we're being told we have to do this. Um, we're not necessarily comfortable doing it without s- specific training. Right. Um, and so I don't know how the ball got rolling necessarily, but my wife is the one that sort of got this ball rolling mm-hmm. to the point to where tonight she was at the union meeting. Oh, good. And it's to the point to where the union now has gone out and taken like checks on all the other school districts in the area to find out what their aides make. And they are just getting paid paltry compared to other districts oh your wife's district is being paid paltry yeah compared to yeah oh okay especially for someone who does the things that my wife has done now for years Mm -hmm. and so she's getting this fairly paltry pay to find out that in our other main district here in this city Mm -hmm. which deals with the high schools the starting wage for someone who does the same exact thing that my wife does at the high school level mm-hmm. is like eight or 10 bucks an hour more to wow. start. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So okay. I hope something comes of it. I just think it's, uh, when you think that like you, you don't have like, what, what am I going to do? Right. Right. If you're ever in that situation where you feel like, what am I going to do? <laughs> There, there is something you can do. Right. Uh, definitely. I've seen, without, okay, were you? No, it, I is just. Is that where that ran? Yeah, I don't okay. know what's, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the goal would be to get, the, you know, what are the comps from the area uh, for that job. Mm-hmm. Um, and sort of get the pay brought up and maybe back pay would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. But it's it's just sort of been frustrating to see how much care these aides put into this particular class in general, the aides and the teacher, uh, and they don't make really any money whatsoever. That's unfortunate. Yeah. You, know, it's a, you like to... Especially, yeah. Well, yeah. That sucks. Yeah. And, you know, this is something that Chandler kind of brought up to a certain extent was this new law that we have here in California where fast food workers, Mm -hmm. um, they're going to have like some sort of like overseeing thing. Right. Like, and I agree with that, but also that the pay was going to come up. Right. And it's like, well, my wife is like dealing with medical grade things all day for people's children. And they're going to be making about the same money that my wife makes at a fast food restaurant. Right. So it's like, if, if this is coming up, then I think there's right definitely r- I, reason to believe that, that those should come up, too. We got... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's progressively where that those, those conversations go. Your son had a... A, a, a different a, sort a, of take. Yeah, yeah, and his complaint was, well, if, they, if they're coming up, but I'm not, then... And, and I feel that my work is X skill set... Why should I not? Yeah. And well, there is there is a definite in that regard. There is a definite, I think, um, devaluing of someone who has sure. worked to get where they're at, and then yes. to have somebody just right. at the bottom come up right, right. below you. But or, I think the lar- yeah. what he may be missing, yeah, in that in that scope is that his if he were to take a step back, his real beef is that. 
probably across a multiple amount of job disciplines, capitalism in general is keeping wages stagnated right. for for a long time. For a long time. Right. And as you see some of the, as legislation or unions start to, you know, uh, through like your wife's agitation to like, hey, something needs to be done here about this. As certain legislators put things into law and you see piecemeal, some job disciplines start to get elevated because they've either been neglected or or they've been outliers, uh, the only reasonable response is, well, okay, who's someone's fighting for them, and now they're coming up to what some would say is a living wage. Right. Okay, so now what about me? Mm-hmm. So how do I change that for me? Right, right. And, and my coworkers or my team or, or you know, welders or whatever, you know, uh, IT support. It's like, or gig workers. Yeah. It's like... You know, I don't have health care, and uh, he has a beef, but I don't think it should be at the at the bludgeoning end of fast food workers just because they're finally getting someone to put they're them. They're fortunate enough to get them. Right. Yeah. His beef should be, how come my industry as well isn't it's stagnating? Seeing, it, right. Yeah. It isn't stagnating. Now... Uh, it may be that there's a, a saturation of workers and that's just kind of where the industry has settled for where he's at. And perhaps that would require him to then have a, a, a change of gears. So like, well, if this profession is saturated, I need to retrain myself to do this over here where uh, there's room to fight for or room to uh, increase my pay scale because, uh, you know, p- the pay scale's higher over there kind right, of thing. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a really interesting conversation, but I, I, <clears throat> I find it interesting how my, just like, just like innocent kind of sort of comments to the right people. Right. Of like, why, what? Venus you know, has had some some similar <clears throat> um, observations, and she's in a union where she's working too, uh-huh. and she's had some similar observations about how overtime is looked at, and then how uh, flex time and this that, or um, observations of personnel, not necessarily in her department, but you know, uh, people talking about other p- places and within the. Uh, municipality mm-hmm. um and it's very like almost defeatist yeah well, like oh well you could you could say something but n- nothing ever gets done mm-hmm. and, and and that my, has definitely been the and truth that, for, and that happens for years, and i understand yeah. that if someone has been in the same place seeing the same without a union you know there a lot of times the bottom rung Trying to ring a bell is falls on deaf ears on your superiors. I get it; it happens. Uh, but I be, I believe personally that that shouldn't negate you from ringing the bell anyway. Right. Because there are laws that prevent retribution for just blowing whistles. Well, and so, if you're in a union position, you it, have someone to right, speak for you. You have an advocate. Yeah. There it, is. There is a. A, like a bargaining sort of thing right. that happens already. And a lot of times, you know, um, man, I just, I just heard this anecdote. Um, it was um, uh, like a, a, a mom was showing a, 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 one of her children how to, how to prepare like a split pea soup or something. And she's got a whole ham with the ham hock. And she cuts off the ham hock and then puts the just the ham chunk in a bowl. And the child says, "Why do you, why do you cut off the ham hock?" Mm-hmm. And the mom says, "Well, because my mom did it that way." Right. And then the the daughter <laughs> goes to the grandma and says, "Why does why why does mom cut off the ham hock?" And she says, "Well, because my mom did it that way." Right. So the the daughter goes to the great grandma and says. 
mom and grandma both cut off the thing and said that you do this. Why? And she said, because it wouldn't fit in the pan. <laughs> yeah. So it was simple. So, right. And, and, and pans have gotten bigger and the, but the lesson as to why it was just an observation. So yeah. the, the common um, employee or team talk of, well, I'm not going to say anything because my understanding is no, nothing ever happens. Uh, I see that all too often throughout multiple industries. Industries, yeah, for sure. When uh, you you are you still have a resource. I, I don't know of any profession that doesn't have it. Are they going to listen and do something? Coin flip. Uh, but that, right, you should always leverage. Even if it's if it's gonna go to a dead end, if you have an opportunity to leverage uh, a grievance that may make your workplace or your work experience better for you, you should do it. Yeah. And 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 if nothing ever happens to change that, you should then be looking f- for another job opportunity where you're not going to be. Um, neglected, mm-hmm. because that's what it is. Like it, you, you shouldn't be forced to work in a place where your opinion or your concerns aren't heard. Man, it is just ro- it's busy, robust today. It is. I don't think I've seen it do this this many times. No, at at this point, the video is a yeah, loss. It's tossed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. But and, I, and that and that makes me feel bad. But it's good to see that your wife went. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ring this bell because yeah. why? Well, it's at not least like, tell me why. I don't think that she she didn't like go to the union and like bang on some drum or whatever or get people behind her. You know, it was yeah. like they all sort of like talked about it like within the classroom with each other. Like, mm-hmm. what's the deal? Like, you know, and and the frustration obviously is mounted for a, right. for a while, right? And I think that there's somebody that she knows who just recently got into the union, like as mm-hmm. in, in a position. Mm-hmm. And so it sort of just kind of got brought up, like, and that person sort of ran with it. And so it's not, you know, it's not like she's like, I'm going to the media, right, and right. you know, or anything like that. But like, she just, I think she just happened to be in the right place. She at the created right a time. conversation yeah. with the, with the right. Yeah. And the thing too, right? You're, it's like insurance. You're with if you have a union and you're paying dues. Well, f- come, yeah, I, I need to get something f- from this, well, right? That's use what, your bargaining power and fight as an advocate on my behalf. I mean that that's what I have seen for years, right? Is that she pays dues and like the union just is complacent and they don't do much for you. Mm. And it's been rather frustrating to watch from like. Like the husband perspective of like watching my wife go and do this thing all the time and then complaining right. about these things that like they feel helpless to. And I'm like, you have a, un- I keep saying this, like you yeah. have a union. Yeah. Well, your union is useless if they're not doing anything for you. Why, why right. are you paying dues? Right. To, exactly. to pay the people? Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Right. You know? It's like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just when to leveraging say, insurance. It's like, well, yeah, I'm. Paying, I've been paying insurance, and if something needs to get repaired and it's covered, yeah, then uh, well, I know I'm doing that. Like one time, she got a raise, but the raise was completely wiped out in a negative way, so she actually made a little less money because the insurance went up. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, I I can feel it. Wow, fuck you, mosquito. We but you know, up high to the ceilings. But anyway, I think it's I, I think it's sort of interesting, and it's definitely sort of a a lesson in you know. And I think I I had my own sort of thing happen with work with with something that like I wouldn't I don't really want to talk about here. But like I ended up having to be vocal about something, and it definitely made some changes for the better. Mm-hmm. So y- you definitely can make it happen. You just have to do it you have to be willing to like not be afraid to like say something yeah you know and we i mean and it's taken if if you listen to the show for x amount of years it's like i'm not a you know a push a heavy wave maker right without being inside like a, a pod that i'm 
super comfortable with. And that generally, you know, the first probably 10 years working for the bank, you know, I stay in my lane. Yeah, uh, that's how I am. And, and as we've reorged a number of times, um, I just got way better at understanding the, uh, the, the politics of a lot of stuff. And the further along I then got from, from those shenanigans, it was like, okay, listen, at this point, I'm the guy that's going to raise the hand. It's like, I understand you guys are making these, some of these exceptions and agreements that absolve risk or compliance, you know, two or three tiers up the ladder for me. But I'm telling you as a person that is the, the one who has a name tied to a ticket that has to implement what you're handshaking about, I have a problem with that. Right. And, and a lot of times you'll see, oh, Jason, can you call me? Can you call? Let's, let's talk about this. Absolutely. But I'm going to put this in an email first. Yeah. So that it is. There's a trail. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to call you. The amount of times that that happens to get something outside of a documented avenue, countless, countless. Mm. And I don't yeah. play that game anymore. It's like, yeah. no, 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 no. I know how this works. You know, you're going to pull me off to the side. We're going to have a conversation. And then it's it, all it is is. Well, I had I had a I had a phone call with you and we talked about this and you said you were you were doing something about this. Did are, you read are, the email? Are you? Why well, I don't remember what exactly was I supposed. To, no, now it's like Dairy Queen receipts. It's like, hi, you know. And I I'm not one of those guys that's usually like a fucking copy your manager type of thing, but I'm copying my manager certainly. Any leads that are involved in the issue, like, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. But right. here's my concern. Right. If you want to, I'm sorry, Jason, we're doing it this way, and it is what it is. Okay. But it's in writing, and it's your name on it, and you're the one telling me to punch it through. You got it. Right. And I'm fine with that, because now I'm absolved. Well, but I, it's the shenanigans <clears throat> part that I just, I'm tired of, like, taking it in the teeth. Yeah. And, and uh, I try to... Impre as Venus got back into the work environment, like, and she's like has assessed and, right. and seen some of these things that I'm sure she, she's not foreign to, right? But she, she just has, hasn't dealt with but it. But she hadn't dealt with it a while, yeah. and she like, oh, uh, and she's very much. She was like very much in like my early ten, twelve years career, like. Oh, this is the way it is, and you, you can't make waves because then your job security might be, man, sweetheart. If you see something, say something. And it, well, that's that's know. how I've always looked at it. Was this is my career? Like, I don't want to make some kind of waves that are gonna right. Like, get someone pissed at me to the point to where they're gonna come after me somehow. Right. Or, you know what I mean? That's how I just uh, yeah. You know yeah. I, I'll work with you, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna be making waves, but you know I. And I don't really see my wife, um, she's not necessarily that person either. Is she going to run for office? She wants to be a... <laughs> she wants to be a union rep now? Student, uh, student superintendent I mean, of the district? I mean, she's definitely not that, uh, that person that's like willing to go beat the drum. She's very much the sit in the back of the class and like, don't call on me. Hi, I'm <laughs> Shan, and I want to be your superintendent union president. Or whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't think she wants to do that at all. Also, squish Mel Mel. I know her. <laughs> she <laughs> literally just wants to go to work and do the thing for the kids, you know. And, and get paid. And get paid a decent wage. Right. You know, so. I would think you'd be hard-pressed to find a non-majority that isn't looking at work in the same way. Right. It's the struggle of not getting some or part of all of those things and then still being expected to put out the effort. Right. That, like, makes the sting of employment such a, like... Yeah. Man, 
I want to get paid. I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm being underpaid. I want to be valued to do the work that I'm putting out for you. Yeah. And then I want to go home. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you 100% of my, my time. And then you pay me. Yeah. And then, you know. Well, and the, I think the real kicker for them is finding out how much other aides make. Right. Right around the area. And right. it's like, oh, damn, we really aren't being valued. And what is our union doing? Right. And, like, hi, our hi. district is really getting away with when, it. When is the new uh, union board votes come up? Because what the fuck have you guys been doing for, for us? One of the inter- be interesting <clears throat> to see. Yeah, one of the interesting things was, like, they have X no- I don't even remember. They have, between a couple of classrooms, they got X number of, like, aides and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they have a, um, they have, you know, like, their job description of the things that mm-hmm. they are supposed to be able to do. Right. And there's levels like one, two, and three. And the, the district has a level three aid, which is the only thing different about the level three aid is that they can do sort of that nurse stuff. Okay. But nobody is in that position. So they're all level one and two which my wife is like level two, mm-hmm. she's doing that stuff, but no one has been hired into the level three thing. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they have a position for it, but they're trying to say, well, you don't do that. And they're like, yeah, we do. We do do that. Mm. We have been doing that for a long time. We were told we were, we have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, That's and, interesting. Right? Yeah. And so they just never hired anybody to do that because it pays more money. Mm-hmm. Well, the option is to pay the aides this level three position, which I don't know how much that is, or to hire a full-time nurse just to come in and deal with all of these things, or maybe two. I don't know. It depends on how many students there are that require all these services. Yeah. I don't know. So it, there's, I think, a trade-off. Yeah. You know, is it, do we have to pay a nurse like this much an hour every day? Right. Or do we pay a little chunk to everybody to have the number three right. and bring well, everybody it, up, it, which is cheaper right. for us. And it, here becomes the, <clears throat> it's like one of those watershed moments where you can't unsee. It's like if someone's actually going to do that assessment and put it above board to where the, the people who make the calls, who fight the fights, actually see it. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, listen. You have three tiers of positions, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you that the number two position is doing number three work. Right. So, yeah. here, here's how this is going to work. You're either going to, the, the classroom that we're in is either going to whittle off the kids that need level three uh, support, or you pay some or all of the level two people doing the level three work, that pay. Right. Or you hire in the nurse that can do the level two or level three stuff, so that way you can continue to... Well, and that's the thing. The nurse is even an aide. They're just a nurse. Oh, yeah. Just to deal with those medical kind of things. The medicals of the three. Yeah. Right. So at some point, something has to change. Because now, now the discussion has... You know, up until this moment in time, it is like an an unspoken truth. Yeah, it's like yeah, the yeah we're paid here, but we we do this. Yeah, like and but we, no one is and that, it's not, and it's not on paper. We actually do this day to day. Yeah, you know, every day. Like I could tell you that I do it for this student, and I did it on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, and I did it for this student on Wednesday and Thursday, and not only did I do it. But Beth did it, mm-hmm. and Susan did it, and uh, James did it. Right. So here you go. 
I mean, ask me. Take yeah. a poll. Right. I guarantee you, I'll give you names and dates mm-hmm. and the number of times. So That's where we're at. So here yeah. we go. Yeah. Let, let's do this. So real interesting. I, I'm curious to know, seeing how she was at the meeting tonight and I had to leave and she wasn't home yet. Oh. To hear about how it went. She, she if you come in the door mm. and she's like popping champagne and like little <laughs> little piñata. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Like, uh, I mean, this is a union meeting. And so I assume that whatever grievances or issues that are brought up at the union meeting have to get voted on and then dealt with between the union and the district. Did she consider going topless <laughs> to help sell her uh, conversation? Not even in the shower. Oh, damn. Yeah. She just said no. I'm Shan. <laughs> Look at these tatas. But we'll, and hear my uh, argument. We'll have to yeah. wait and see, I guess. She has sent me a s- couple of small books in my I messages right now. Oh. That I haven't had an opportunity to read and so Oh they're they're lengthy. Oh. Yeah. And all I had I all I had like time me. to reply while you were talking was uh I have fed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm swallowing the wiener. Yeah. What? Yeah. What kind of podcast are you guys doing? One without video. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. All righty. It is a podcast, though, hashtag, to be fair. Hashtag JetBlue. As long as your Mac is recording right now, we're, we're okay. Yeah, that's good. I think we're good. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. We'll go back to tech support. So oh, you, okay. You yeah, know yeah. where I'm going. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. last Friday, it's uh, Friday, so my dad's, st- I'm off, my dad stops by. I think I know where this is headed. Yeah. Okay. My dad stops by, and he's sitting at the bar. I think he had been here maybe five minutes. Uh, we're talking. I was asking him about the, uh, st- I was confirming the station wagon that we had when we lived in Torrance. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, I, w- I just need to know what it was. It, that. Oh, the one. The Caprice. Okay. Yeah. We, so I was, I was right. The color was a brown with a tan sideboard. Um, yeah. I could not nail down for him the, the dent that happened on the fender. <laughs> so, and while in my mind, I was sure that my mom did it mm-hmm. because my dad couldn't confirm the story. Now I'm half wondering if it was something my dad did. He's like, I'm not, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember how the dent happened. And I went, wait, well, I mean, you know, sometimes that's so, just stuff. You and forget. I had it. What ended up happening with the, uh, uh, I had the repair job somewhat right. So uh, it was a fairly big dent behind the rear wheel, but before the, the bumper. And we had a group of gentlemen walk past uh, the house that uh, asked my dad, told my dad, we can fix this. We'll fix it for free. Like they were just looking to do it, I guess. Okay. And, you know polish their chops on free we just need practice yeah auto body stuff my dad not alan iverson yeah no we talk about practice (laughs) right they were all about the practice they were all about it yeah they're like how can we get more yeah uh my dad said sure go nuts but then my dad had to leave for work Mm. so my dad left and the just leave the fender there what did you just leave the fender there? He left in. Uh, we still had the truck at this point, oh. so he had a he had a truck. So the gentlemen that were fixing the car were punching holes in it and then like using a yeah. slide hammer to pull out the dent. Yeah. And my mom, in hearing the uh, slide hammer. The, the slide hammer and the series of what looked like shotgun bullet holes in the side for them to pull out the dent, she gets nervous. And tells them, stop, just cover it up. Like, she, she doesn't like them punching holes in the sheet metal and, and pulling on it. Right. And it looks like <clears throat> a gunshot. She tells them to stop. And that's why it ended up with just this ugly amount of Bondo that wasn't even sanded. And, oh. it, and it didn't even cover the holes. <laughs> so it was like, they kind of brought up the dent, but left the holes from the slide hammer. Yeah. It looked absolutely atrocious. And then when my dad came home. What the hell's. Up? He's like, why didn't you fix the dent? And he got pissed at my mom. And my mom was pissed because I didn't know what was going on. And he, my dad was like, you, you fucking let him finish. Yeah. Like they didn't get to finish. Yeah. 
Anyway, so he's telling me that story, and he's reminding me about his van, which was a total pimp wagon. Yeah. God damn. Do they have a mattress in the back of it? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. Yes. And he, in <laughs> fact, uh, he told Kim, ha- hashtag K Kim, that because he had it during his college years. Oh, oh even yeah. better. Oh, yeah. He, 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 this is my dorm room. <laughs> yeah, he slayed some poon back there. I guarantee it. <laughs> Would you like a drink? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Check out the disco ball. No, I didn't slip anything in there. What? What are you talking I'm about? I'm slipping something in there. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go, Jim. Anyway, my dad, poon slayer. Anyway, uh, God, it, uh, and I saw his like he got his eyes got all wide when he talked about it because he, it was he loved it. The fucking van was a it was an eighteen van, right? Yeah, dude, it was it was awesome. Yeah, we're right in the middle of that conversation. I'm telling him like, yeah, then we're gonna buy the if we win the lottery, we're buying three Hellcat motors and we're putting them all in station wagons and we're gonna fucking race them. Uh, he's like, oh yeah, I like this idea. I get a call. <laughs> it's Venus. I pick up the phone. Well, hey, what's going on? She's like. Okay, my dad did the thing that your dad has almost done. He called the number on one of those scam lock your screen Microsoft mm. uh, Google things. And I went, oh, shit. And she went, what does he need to do? He's going to bring the computer by. And I went, one, what the fuck? Turn off all the Wi-Fis yeah. for first. <laughs> I, said, I said, he needs to call the bank immediately and lock down lock, lock it down you or some, you or your dad go down uh, cuz he has a he banks locally there in Folsom mm-hmm. so he's like uh you know, first name basis with his his bank Eldorado you know, savings even smaller than that oh, okay. like small small <laughs> right. they're right off Sutter Street yeah uh Joe's bank y- yeah i mean honestly <laughs> some I'm, dude standing yeah. on the corner how you doing <laughs> You want to give me... Oh, you want some change, too? Hey, you give me your <laughs> deposit. You bankroll it. I give you free paper towels. <laughs> nice. Uh, you're in the in the drawing for the free Civic, you know? <laughs> uh, Joe's. Oh, you need checks. Hey, I, I got a check checks. for you. You see this bat? <laughs> Writes all my checks. Anyway, uh, I'm like, you need to go down there. And you need to tell him to lock lock his stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't know how far it is, and I'm not going to work, but because she, she was pissed, mm-hmm. obviously, because it's her dad, and he did the thing. And she's at work. So she is triaging this while at work, and her dad is being a, an idiot. Mm-hmm. And she just needs, like, strip down what's next. I'm like, I, I don't actually know how this works, but he definitely needs to call the bank, lock down his shit. She's like, and he's going to bring the computer to you. I'm like, I've call the police first to see if they if they want to do anything with it. Is there something they can the, want to right. care if about? They, if they want to look at it to see, or they're going to open up some sort of internet forensic thing. I'm like, I don't know. They I, may think, just, I think the, the police are just like, Binoculars, like looking out into the that, distance, like I don't know anything about the internet. Yeah, that that sounds dangerous. <laughs> anyway, do you uh, know the name of the perp? Yeah, or what their address is? Uh, get out of my face! Did he steal your truck? No. <laughs> well, then I I don't know. Do you, uh, you have a nephew or something you can talk to? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I'm like, well, don't fucking bring it here because. Someone in the authorities may want to do something with it. Right. Or the bank, if they're going to do some sort of forensic case, I don't know. But I'm not going to touch it until he contacts the authorities first, because I I haven't been in this spot yet. Uh, okay. All right. Should hang up. <laughs> so my dad is sitting across from me. And he got the gist of it, and he he pulls out his phone, and he goes, "Uh, I got this the other day. What what do I do with this?" And it was an an Amazon like spam oh, DM yeah. thing. Like, <laughs> click here. There's something wrong with your Amazon link. And I went, "Yes, yeah, swipe it off, Dad. Delete it. S- delete that shit. Yeah, swipe it off." And he was like, "All right, good." And so here's, <laughs> I already clicked the link, yeah, but okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So here's the thing. I have either trained my dad so well yeah. 
or instilled the fear of God into him about what my wrath would be. Sure. That um, his protocol when he gets to this spot that Venus's dad got to is he shuts the lid or he just doesn't use his phone or he goes past the screen on his phone until he sees me. I don't see it. And says... <laughs> Like I, I shit you not, the last time he got locked, he, you know, he was he got an ad block, whatever that did the whole full screen thing. Yeah. Um. It was when I had COVID. Oh. And my he had brought the la- his laptop down to my sister, and my sister brought over. I can't remember. She was stopping by for something. It may have been tests or masks or. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but we were, she was masked and I was in the garage and she, she sets the, she set his laptop down in the UPS, <laughs> in, the square. in the UPS square. And I went, what's that? And she went, dad said the guys, the bad guys got him again and you would know what to do. And I went, <laughs> like you're, uh, oh, okay. Like you're changing Walter White. Right. Out of, yeah. I'm know. laundering the shit or, mm, you know, yeah. and I went, okay. And her delivery was somewhat off kilter from the past instances of how dad has specifically told me what happened. So it was just enough of a twist where I'm like, I have no fucking idea what's going on here. But that's my dad's protocol. If, He's using the computer, and it does something where it tells him, please call, or you have a virus, or anything. He just shuts the lid, (laughs) unplugs it, and then waits a week or however many days it is until he sees me, and then he hands it off and says, the bad guys got me. (laughs) The bad guys got me. And that's it. And you're like, what websites were you on, Dad? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> what are you downloading? And so, uh, uh, Venus's dad ends up bringing the laptop by, and he calls me on his way over, and he's like, uh, I'm, I'm bringing the laptops by, and um, do you need anything? I'm like, I need your power bricks. And, uh, and he's like, uh, do you need my... Pa-? He keeps a notebook of his passwords. I'm like... I think your daughter knows all of your passwords, but please bring it just in case. I don't know where this is going to go or how sideways, but bring it and we'll go from there. So he drives it over. He's here and he kind of walks me through the conversation. And it is pretty much uh, outside of a twist, which I think had to do uniquely because he had such a small bank and not Wells Fargo, B of A or pick another oh. or pick another big bank city bank for their like fake page they bring right. up yeah so um he was at a news site and off brand i'm going to say news in quotation marks and air quotes because i think we all know it wasn't real news but i'm not going to say any more than that and he <laughs> he he's like uh you know there was an ad there for uh uh, James Bond girls, where are they now? So I, I clicked on that, and uh, man, okay. So the first one was a story about where Halle, Halle Berry was, and and then uh, it was a blue screen came up, and it was from Google, and it said, uh, and so I, I called the number, and it was uh, then they had they gave me a case number, and then they had me call back another number. So the first number he called back was a toll-free one, registered to like a Verizon blankety-blank. It was like throwaway. (sighs) The second number was a uh, Oahu 808 area code number. And then they gave him a essentially a whatever the six to eight digit teamviewer.net link was for them to give remote control whatever and in his phone number hops they obviously then had his his phone where they then pushed a like uh some sort of are you seeing this as like a, a confirmation essentially it was a way for him to believe that whatever hack that had happened had also gotten to his phone very Clever. Clever twist. So he's like, oh, it's on my phone. 
So I didn't. I don't even. I didn't even give them my phone. But somehow they had my phone and they pushed a thing to my phone that gave me the like it was secure. And uh, I uh, I did the the thing and they had control and they went to my bank and and I where the it started to go sideways was I think they then realized he was small bank and they didn't have the way to do the fake roo right of the <clears throat> bank deposits so they told him that in order to fix the problem he needed to go down to his bank is it closer yeah it's right down on Sutter Street oh fuck Chuck god damn it don't tell him where <laughs> great <laughs> it's, it's like three minutes away I can walk there it's like four blocks yeah. uh, sir <clears throat> 941 so they, Sutter yeah they told him to walk down to his bank take out Nine thousand nine hundred dollars. Oh my god, dude! Then walk back to the ATM, and when he got to the ATM with the cash, call the support number. They would give him an account to where he would then deposit oh the nine thousand nine hundred dollars, and that would uh, resolve the the hack. That would fix the hack. That it would essentially, uh, he would be taking his money back out from the hacked account and putting it back into his account, where it would then all be just washed, washed away. Yeah. No big, no big deal. Bob's your uncle, it, and it, it was it that, takes nine thousand nine hundred dollars right, to right. do that. Yeah, which as someone that works for the bank, the ten, there's a ten thousand dollar limit li- limit on where you have to f- file a, a um, warning as a teller. Yeah. Which, of course, is like, well, if someone comes right up to the limit, that's just as much of a red flag. Anyway, it's, a, it's just under the mandatory flag for financial fraud. At that point in the conversation, he hangs up and realizes, why, why would I go from, why would, why would I do and then go back in? Wait a second. Yeah. It's at that point when he hung up, supposedly on his way to the bank to then conduct this thing, he calls Venus and says, hi, I did. Venus unloads on him, and then we progress to where we are. So I then tell him, uh, I'm going to nuke this laptop from orbit. Like... It's, I'm never going to boot it up. I'm not going to do any sort of forensic shenanigans here. Yeah. I want no part of whatever happened. Yeah. I don't really care. And, uh, but I'm going to format this. And he, he had a, he took notes of the, of the, all the conversation. Like, oh, then they had me go to this link with this, the teamviewer.net. So He's you like, didn't, you didn't even look at the laptop at all. <clears throat> no, no. Interesting. I, uh, none. And I would have uh, poked around, I think. Yeah, no. Well, because, and here's the thing, one of the things he, he's like, they had me run a net stack command. Uh-huh. So I'm like, already, I mean, he's on a singular Wi-Fi with all this stuff. I'm like, I can't trust any of your stuff. Because if they did a team viewer thing where they could have then put on a payload, like, and he wouldn't have been watching that. Like, I just watched one of those. YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the thing. I'm like, I'm not versed enough to know whether or not at this point in time, the shenanigans are so sophisticated that as soon as you're doing this, while they've got you distracted looking at your bank thing, they're not putting on a payload with a Trojan for backdoor. Oh, team viewer or, or, just lets them do whatever they want. Right. <clears throat> so that was really the bulk, but the net stat part was the, well, now I don't know what else was on the wire that they may have, once they got into the team viewer, just pushed out to any of the other devices. And he had brought his personal computer and the, the work computer, yeah. which is where he was doing personal business mm-hmm. and not on his personal one. Right. So what we ended up doing... Oh, and then he, when he was conveying the story, he's like, yeah, and then they sent something to my phone, and I said... You, you leave your phone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe your phone. And he was very like, okay, whatever you need. Absolutely. Damn. Like, so wiped his phone. Yeah. Blind. Like, as soon as he set it down, 
uh, I told, I said, and here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call Venus or I'll tell Venus that, uh, to tell his wife, Mary, mother-in-law, that you don't have your phone on you and you're going straight home because we're wiping this phone like now ASAP. Yeah. Like you're going to leave and within the hour, as soon as I get off work, we're wiping the phone and wiping the laptop. Uh, and I said, I'll take a look at your personal one just to see if it, there was any actual payload stuff that happened here. We'll, we'll deal with that. So wipe the work, wipe the phone. We then repurposed the personal laptop to be an official business one. And I kept the, it was old anyway. It was like 2017 Asus. And they, he didn't need it. My wife's sending me something. I'm have to see what that is. Um, a, a very, uh, you know, man, <laughs> that sucks. I hate, I hate that whole industry. Yes, you know, just a bunch of assholes. <clears throat> Those are the. Uh, I love watching the videos of the dudes who. There's like one guy with like a, I don't know, South African or Australian accent or something, mm -hmm. and he, like fucks with the those guys and i love that and he he <clears throat> he figures out like when he's in team viewer with them he's in some back door getting into them and then he's like getting into their cameras on their laptops and he's pulling down data from their machines with, like usually it's like personal info and yeah banking data and all kinds of he pulls all that stuff and then he calls them up and he's like, why? And he t calls them by their real names. And they're like, how did you, you know? Kinda, yeah. And I love watching those videos. I wish, mm. I wish I had time. Yeah. To, to be that educated on how to do that. Right. Because I, I can't stand that there are people that. Prey on people. <sighs> yeah. Like, so irritating. For thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they were that close. Yeah. And. He made a mistake, right. a couple mistakes, but he's not a bad person. Right. Like he uh, it works very hard. He's worked very hard, runs a very good business, and potentially this asshat was going to pilfer that man's hard work right. through a, a, a mistake of not being fully versed in all of the shenanigans uh, uh, of how the internet works in this current day and age. Like, right. that's, it's unfortunate. And so when I got done uh, rebuilding the laptop with Venus's help, Venus has probably did more work than I did, certainly with setting up his phone. Well, I was going to say, does he have backups and stuff like that? Uh, most of their business now at this point is cloud level. Is cloud level. Mm. So it was... We've we've come real far. I was telling this to Venus. I'm like, I've I've been supporting her her dad and his business there in Folsom since 1995, 96. Mm -hmm. And throughout that course in time, his business started on DOS and Windows 3.1. And I have rebuilt his computers. From tape backups and Windows 3.1 all the way to Windows 95. Uh, and then when we were done using tape backups, we were using iOmega zip drives. Yeah. And I remember doing that. <clears throat> and then um, we moved to, like, mirrored drives. They'd been restored with that. Then Windows 98. Then Windows. Windows using an emulated DOS application for their company. And now they are finally on like a native Windows experience that then leverages the cloud for everything. Mm -hmm. So the rebuilds have progressively gotten almost turnkey. Right. It's like w way easier for me at this point to just be like, you guys got your stuff in the cloud? Yep. F we'd, uh, fuck wipe it. it. Fuck it. Wipe it. Yeah. We just wipe it. And with now with like, the current generation, at least, you know, up to at least. 2010, at least on most PCs, the base image is built into like RAM 
on the computer so you're not having to go like where's my rescue disk do i need a rescue disk most of it's just like right. rebuild right from bios and you're done and gone you're not putting in usb sticks and bootable shit it's just so it's like well fucking if you're in the cloud okay let's let's just i'm just going to rebuild you like uh, there's no point in trying to clean this one i'm just not that versed either i'll i'll fully admit like my deep dive ability into like pull apart uh, like a Trojan or an infection is not even close to where it was when I was right. Well, 98 <clears throat> to 2006. And they're way more sophisticated. Oh, yeah, way more. <clears throat> it's like so. I, I just don't have the time. So if we can rebuild it, it is what it is. Uh, we got that all done, and I wrote him a, uh, a really funny email because his phone had a ser- He's somewhat just a little bit under my dad. Uh, my dad... Like I said, with the Amazon one, the Amazon spam, he'll leave it until he can show it to me, and then I clean it off. Um, Venus's dad had a series of solicitations and, like, spam stuff. Yeah, he got way further into the process. Where he, sometimes, <clears throat> it irritates my wife to no end. Uh, like, he'll get, like, a survey or a, a, a spam solicitation question, and he replies, stop sending me stuff. Or... No, I'm a happy customer. You know, that kind of thing? Yeah. And Venus is like, Dad, there's, there's no human on the other end of that. It's, there's, it, stop. And all you've done is give them a positive feedback on the number. So there's a program that's going to say, this number's hot. This number's valid. Keep sending stuff. Keep sending stuff here. And then your, your number gets sold as a, as a valid number. <clears throat> So I wrote this this after we cleaned his phone and cleaned the laptop like thing to him like, you know. So here's what's going to happen like for the next at least thirty to sixty to maybe even ninety days, everything about what you are online is now a target. You're going to get an escalated amount of solicitations. They have your phone number, so you're probably going to get push notifications from stuff. The emails, uh, your your laptops are clean, but you really need to like dial it back. Like where you go online, you know, try and take your news from agnostic places that aren't serving ads like AP News or like uh, like an RSS feed. You know, stuff on your phone, don't reply to it. It's, it's all a scam. Don't Just and, delete and, and it. And swipe it off as fast as possible. And if you don't understand it, don't touch it. Wait for Venus or, or me and I'll, I'll take care of it. Anytime your computer locks up with a, a full screen message that says call Google or call Microsoft or Norton Antivirus or something, something, and it takes over your computer. That's bad. It's a, it's a fucking scam. Mm-hmm. And I put a, in this letter to him, I'm like, my dad, I, my dad does this. I have told my dad this. Just shut the lid and br- bring it over. Like, it's okay. There's... It's okay. Like, we'll just rebuild it. Right. The, but the exposure on going any further than that or trying to think that you can mouse your or happy click your way out of it. Right. Outsmart them somehow. You, no. Yeah. They're way smarter <clears throat> than we are. Unless you're some sort of network technician. Right. Unless you're yeah. the guys on <clears throat> the internet doing it professionally yeah. or you're a security you know, enthusiast, it's beyond our pay grade. Shut the lid, bring it over. I'm gonna rebuild it. Fuck it, it's okay. Just like the six million dollar man. Yeah, you can rebuild him. Yeah, and at this point, it's so easy. Like, <laughs> why? It's well, why not? It's okay. Right. It's okay. Well, that's funny. I mean, that's sad. I mean, and it, it pisses is. me off. It does. And I get no happy end. when I watch those videos where they like. Cause the the business to shut down for some amount of time while they fucking burn everything or whatever. Right. I love that. Yeah. And this guy, the one guy I was talking about in particular, he'll go through and contact the authorities and, you know, they'll get raided and that kind of stuff. I love that because those guys need, they I I really want to show, uh, I I want to, the um, Rober, Rober's sting where they, he goes with the glitter that, bomb and yeah, stuff. Yeah, with the glitter bomb. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably 
an easy gateway into uh, like a palatable way for someone, and certainly for my dad too, of, of someone that's not tech savvy, understanding the shenanigans that goes on behind that kind of thing and him, Venus's dad, being someone that was that close to the threshold of money withdrawal. Of losing 10 grand. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, it's not going to change anything about the experience, but perhaps it may make him a little bit more aware of the things to look out for. Um, I would encourage you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Mark Rober had like a his infamous glitter bomb um, project where he then sent it to some of those scammers that are based overseas. Yeah. Um, I highly encourage you to look look that up and watch it because even if you're not a tech savvy person, um, it's entertaining and it gives you enough background on the type of bullshit and abuse that these people take from. Um, People that are unsuspecting, that like are don't know any better, yeah. And it's not their fault. They're not security professionals. They're just someone that was maybe playing online poker or enjoying a personal vice or just browsing the news, yeah. And they clicked on something that looked complete, appealing, completely benign, and right. it turned out to be nefarious. Um, I tell you what, though, it has spiked my. Uh, lit my fire into to building one of those pie hole VPN things mm-hmm. that you just stick on your your network and it sucks out and filters out all of those ad shenanigans. Yeah, I've got one Pi Four that it's, as soon as I get some cycles, I'm like fuck it. I mean, if that if that makes it easier for my my dad and for Venus's dad, you know, I'll start cranking those out. And I'll, I'll I'll hand them out to hey to this thing's just sitting needs. here plugged in it's yeah. on your network don't worry about don't it don't worry about it it's gonna it, do a thing and you know uh, to me that'd be worth it to make sure that the people that I care about don't get absolutely taken bumped. to the cleaners Take, yeah that's fuck man yeah it's I know. so irritating when I watch those videos I get so man I get pissed and it's not even I'm not getting taken to the cleaners yeah somebody else is getting taken to the cleaners ma'am. ma'am. I need you to do this, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. The authorities—they're on their way. Like, just praying. You're on looking people. at your bank, and they've they've done CSS stuff, and you're like, well, why would I not trust this? This says someone put thirty thousand dollars in my account. Right. I have to make this right. Like, I'd be all bitch. Most, I'm going shopping. Yeah, I got thirty extra bucks. Well, <laughs> possession is nine tenths of the law. Uh, who are you? And oh, <laughs> click, fuck, bye. See you in court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. You want me to buy thirty thousand bucks in Walmart gift cards? Well, fuck, I'm spending it. <laughs> bye. Yeah, there's another guy who does. He click. like, he like masks his voice like a woman, and then just takes them on a ride. Yeah, and like gets them all pissed off, and like it's fascinating, and he's like. Yeah. Oh, I, I redeemed that card. No, ma'am, why are you doing that? Yeah, I bought you a MacBook. <laughs> N- no, why would you do that? Well, what else was I supposed to do with it? I bought the gift card. Why would I give it to you? Yeah, but no, you want a MacBook, right? <laughs> you want me to send it to you? Ma'am. So funny, dude. I did not ask you for a MacBook. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're at time, sir. All right. All right, well... I mean, you can do something about it. That's all I have to say. You can wash your hands. You can wash your ass. You can return the cart. Um, you can check your oil, Tony. You can wear the mask. You can do the kindness. Get the shot. Register to vote. Yeah, for and we'll, sure. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. <laughs>